there's a this notion of the black pill. This is the notion that you wake up and that everything is crap, and it's a form of nihilism. Okay. It's the idea that when you really see how things are, you say, man, uh, there's a uh, philosopher, um, um, what, what is, uh, oh, what's his name? I'll think of his name, but um, okay. he, he was partly inspiration for the uh, TV series True Detective, the first season. Okay. Uh, if you ever saw that. Yeah. But he is, so. um, he's a, um, an antinatalist, and an antinatalist is someone who um, doesn't believe that um, human beings should reproduce, we should just die out. Um, and he f- has a, a nihilist, nihilist philosophy in which he sort of sees uh, the human race as like a bacteria. We've infected mm-hmm. a planet, and at some right. point it'll develop the right sort of antibodies and we'll all be gone. Mm-hmm. And so that is sort of a form of the black pill, sort of like you, 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 you see things and boom, everything is horrible, and so you have the potential to succumb to, to nihilism. Right, got it. There's also a white pill, and the white pill would be the ability to, uh, that would be religion, or um, in fact, some evangelical um, um, folks call it the white pill, that you suddenly see that there is, wait a minute, there's God, and there, so there, there is redemption, or there is something better outside of all this, and whatnot. And the point of bringing up any of those sorts of pills is that each of them represent a way of being able to dance and deal with reality. Right. And all of them may have a shortcoming, or they, they, they offer some sort of solution. And they have a parallel, I think, in some of the things you and I have been talking about here in terms of um, how do people engage with themselves and the world in such a way that, um, I don't want to use the word happy, because right. that's a pill in right. of itself. As an aside, there's right. a, um, a famous philosopher, Elaine Badu, and he talks about, he calls it the happiness industrial complex. Oh, okay. And that um, part of what drives... If there were a happiness pill, for instance, it comes in the form of, um, he uses, uh, Zizek talks about this too, of Western Buddhism, that we all need to start um, buying meditation apps and right. doing Yoda, yoga, doing Yoda. Don't do Yoda. Don't, don't do <laughs> but, No, uh, you got to, though. There's a couple of jokes in there. I'm not going to go uh, there. No, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, it's good that you can uh, hit on it and then go back to the it, topic. That's because I, I woke I'm, up at four this morning. I'm, I'm tired. That's only that's the only reason. The, but yes. So so the, the idea that um, – where was that with this thing? Oh, it was uh, the um, uh, yoga or um, and all this sort of stuff and meditation. And all those are a form of um, either the black or the blue or the red pill. They could be the blue pill because they allow you to become better consumers, better mm-hmm. cogs in the machine of capitalism, without ever really questioning things. Like, for instance, again, if you, why do we need to meditate more? Uh, the things that you feel, the fact that you can't sleep, or the fact that you have, um, you are always anxious, maybe something you need to know as opposed to being um, um, numbed from. And the goal would be, how do we engage with ourselves? That would be a wonderful example of that there is an engagement with your own suffering in such a way that may inform you maybe how to change your life, may be able to inform you on how to be able to make the lives of others better, but none of those are the sort of pills that offer a fix that either give you a, uh, numb you into sleeping or give you a false sense of being awake. <laughs>